Hi YouTube and happy Thursday. Today I'm going to do a quick video in which I discuss why I think it's great to use POMOS devices even now in the year 2020. 2020 approaching 2021 in quite a short time. What we're looking at are two of the newer, even newest devices, the Palm TX here on the left and the Trio 700P on the right. These run PalmOS 5 and have ARM processors, so that really they're the fastest of the bunch, in addition to having rechargeable batteries, high resolution color screens, and uh, very good wireless support. Bluetooth and you know a 3G, 2G, 3G radio in the Trio, and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in the uh, TX here. The older Palm devices, say the Palm 3 that I got for probably $5 in 2005, and the Alpha Smart Dana that I've shown previously are 68K devices. They're monochrome and they have electroluminescent backlights as opposed to just being a bright backlit color TFT display like you can see on the TX here. Those are 68K base, they're Palm 2 through Palm OS 2 through Palm OS 4, whereas these are Palm OS 5 or Garnet. And one thing though that all of these have in common, except for the trios, <laughs> is, is graffiti handwriting recognition. Also, that might be a thing that you like and is fairly easy to, to learn for you. You know, a simple up, down, up, down diagonal for the letter A, for example. Anyway, so I, I really like these devices because there's still a lot you can do with these that you couldn't even on an Android device or Windows Mobile or, or even Symbian, you know, operating systems that are more contemporary to Palmos. I think one of the biggest things is developing your own applications. It seems like you can do that all on board a Palmos device, whereas you need an SDK and, and I, I'm pretty sure I haven't done it before you need an SDK and a PC to develop, say, an Android app. Anyway, so with that, I'll go ahead and show you what I have first on the TX on the left and then on the Trio. The TX, again, it's you can use an external keyboard, but you need graffiti or the on-screen keyboard for entering in text, whereas you have this really nice, firm, excellent-to-press backlit keyboard on the Trio. Okay. So let's move that to the side and focus in on the TX. That's your startup screen. You can customize this. Again, there's PIM apps are really classic on these. Your uh, calendar, memo pad, to-do list, um, addresses, and so on. But these also have great web connectivity, great games, and great programming applications. I'll go ahead to the home screen and we can see what we have. Um, you might notice this row of, of, of um, virtual buttons at the bottom of the screen. That's for searching things, menu, time, alerts, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. It's, I think, Bluetooth 1.1, 700 something KBIPs, and then 802.11b Wi-Fi. I've updated this so it handles WPA2, but really that eats battery and it's it's not completely compatible with Wi-Fi, at least the speed, at least speed-wise uh, today. I think this is for doodling. I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, changing orientation in case they used a, a um, wireless keyboard and then bringing down your your entry interface, either virtual keyboard or or virtual graffiti writing space. Again, on a lot of the older Palm Pilots, you would just have a 160 by 160 monochrome display and then some area at the bottom for, for doodling and graffiti. Anyway, so this is a home screen. I forget what ad it is, but yeah, we have the cal cal calendar, calculator, basic utilities, Adobe Reader. You can read PDFs here. A phone dialer, that's kind of cool and, and old and outdated. Contacts, addresses, this database application that's useful. Oh, e-reader. You could, you know, read books on here. 
what's next? Uh, yeah, wireless keyboard support, uh, piano, which is fun. It even, you know, transcribes what you put in. So I think you could save that. Yeah, so there's there's music applications for these. I think especially the Kli series from Sony has chips that improve the the synthesis synthesis quality for 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 music applications. Okay, oops, I'll go back. Mini piano, uh, NV backup. There's a Notepad. That's fun. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, useful. You can doodle on the screen. Uh, let me keep going down. And then SSH uh, games and, and various things. And some co uh, compatibility between Palmas 2 through 4 and then 5, but not complete. Because, again, you're jumping from 68K to ARM. But it, but there is some compatibility, which is really nice and, and surprising. You wouldn't see that, say, in MacOS switching from, from uh, 68K to PPC all the time. Sometimes, but not uh, for the most part, as I recall, there wasn't quite as good uh, compatibility. Emulators for for the uh, Tandy Color computer, Telnet, Dragonforth, which really works best in Palmos 2 through 4, but they still, again, run on Palmos 5. Free 42, which is an excellent, excellent, excellent programmable RPN calculator emulator of the great, the late great HP 42S. I can print out output from this to the HP 82 240A or 240B infrared uh, telnet uh, printer send data over the infrared port which is excellent uh, uh -huh. yeah let's see what else we have file Z for file management more games guinea pig that's a Genesis emulator they play Genesis in your games in your pocket there's Rogue, um, Kronos, which is an interactive fiction interpreter. Again, lots of variety in games. A DOS emulator. There's also, um, I think, Scum VM, so you can play certain um, DOS era games. Um, PSSH and PTelnet, if you need to connect to BBSs or your home server. An excellent Cosmac Elf emulator. Again, tons of emulators. Syed for writing, Red Eye to print to the Red Eye printers, as I mentioned, the 82240s. SimCity, and let's see more Telnet. Just that's what I happen to have here. Oh, also a, a Kim emulator. I'll try doing demos. I think really Free 42 would be a great subject for a future video. Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, stop with that. Oh, oh, one thing to point out is, is uh, for backups, the older Palm devices had used RAM and it was volatile storage. So unless you hot synced to a PC or used VFS backup to backup to an SD card, you lose all your data. Both the TX and the Trio 700P have non-volatile storage. So you don't lose the data internally when you when the battery runs out or you turn it off. Excuse me. <laughs> when you turn it off, you shouldn't lose your data with, you know, Palm 3 or older Palm. Uh, but when the battery runs out, you would lose the contents of the RAM. So you have to back it up to an SD card, as I do frequently in my M125. But anyway, with these, if you do a hard reset on those with non-volatile storage, like these two devices, not the older Palms, uh, you would lose your data. So you need to use... A, NV backup for backing up the non-volatile file uh, file system, NVFS, to an SD card. Um, yeah, and as far as battery life, I mean, these are both pretty good, although they're, they have, you know, bright backlit displays and wireless interfaces. I think with the Trio 700P, with its 2200 milliamp -year hour extended battery, I could get eight hours just listening to music over Bluetooth. That's an advantage of older devices. The... Uh, battery consumption isn't that high. They're still pretty fast. Um, like say 16 or 30, 33 megahertz, 68K, 32-bit processors. Still, you can get weeks and weeks of battery life. Uh, the palm tops, which I love, the DOS palm tops, will get weeks, if not months, of battery life, but are 
16 bit and 5 to 8 megahertz. So anyway, the battery life's quite good in the older palms, also good on these newer palms that are 200, 300 megahertz ARM devices, TIO map and some, but these are both Intel PXA ARM, ARM devices. Anyway, so back out, I thought about backups and I went into this rabbit hole of, of different ways of backing up your palms and then, you know, thinking about the battery life on these devices. As I had said, I really like the Trio because of this wonderful backlit keyboard. It has an excellent feel and it's super easy to use and honestly a lot easier for me to use than Graffiti. I have a lot more apps on here. I also have a CPM Emulator, a Dragon Forth again, but I haven't been able to use the apps that generates in Palmos 5. I'm thinking of getting Cordis Forth, but that still costs $100, so you know maybe I'll have to shift into Pascal. What that gets at is programmability. There's so many programming languages for this that even you can use to make apps on the device itself. Forth, Pascal, Python, uh, Scheme, um, Basic, C, and, and as we'll see in a second, also uh, MATLAB or Octave. You can make drawings with uh, Diddlebug. There isn't you know, a built-in notepad app on the Trio. Now jumping into that. Yeah, I'm sorry for being a little disorganized. There's just so much here. There's so many, you know, rabbit holes I can go down. Uh, LARN, you know, various rogue, uh, roguelikes you can play. Interactive Fiction again. Lisp Me, which is Scheme. Uh, Lime, that is a MATLAB Octave equivalent. It's a little weaker. NV Backup, like I was talking about. Opera Mini to browse the web. Even HTTPS, you know, the SSL web you can do. Uh, over Opera Mini because it uses a proxy. Thank you, Opera. DOSBox, which works great on the Trio. The built-in keyboard works. I you know, really think this is good for emulating DOS applications. At least 8088 level, uh, 286 and, and lower in one megabyte of memory. This seems to work nicely here. Cord is fourth, but that's the evaluation version. Ick. Yeah, $100 for a dead app. No, thank you. Sorry to Neil Bridges. Um, okay, what else do we have? Uh, Resco apps, uh, RSRC edits, so you can create the resources, you know, menus and forms for creating apps on the device. SimCity, Space War, and Space Trader, which are, uh, Space Trader especially is pretty famous from these devices. SSH, um, Universe Web Browser, IRC, Web Pro, and a few other things. Let's then go back here. There's a camcorder built in. There's your camcorder and speaker below it. Uh, yeah, you have contacts, various PIM applications. Yeah, mail. Um, I think that's calendar and then phone and, and, and contacts and a few other things. I don't use this as a phone. I, I don't think you can activate it. Messaging, uh, you can run midlets that you would run on midlet phones, regular flip phones, because there is a Java VM. It's a bit old, but I think a lot of things would still run. I mean, Opera Mini is a midlet. Uh, RSS through news, but honestly, it's better with Opera Mini because of HTTP, HTTPS handling. Um, puzzles, more games. Yeah, Sprint TV is dead. Voice memo, so you can um, record yourself either with the built-in microphone or with this uh, headset here. Yeah, there's your microphone. Uh, and, you know, talk about what you need to do in a day or, or play some music and, and save a quick recording. Quality isn't, is probably not good enough for, for music. Uh, P-Tunes, I listen to internet radio a lot, you know doing all kinds of things. And that is, is, is really beautiful, beautiful in quality, 128K bips. It definitely beats listening to, you know, your regular AM, FM radio. Anyway, so there's, uh, just my point is there's still a lot you can do with these. The battery life's excellent. As far as connectivity, you can do, uh, use Wi-Fi, but I think you get a lot better battery life with uh, Bluetooth uh, dial-up and still high enough bandwidth for the kinds of things you do on here. You know, SSH, Telnet, 
listening to music. All of that, I think, less than half, half um, 0.5 megabips is, is still okay for those sorts of applications. Well, I hope that's informative. I hope this inspires you to take out your old toys from 10 to 15 years ago and reuse them creatively. I think I'm really excited about using these types of devices for Internet of Things tasks. I also have old Symbian and Android phones. You know, I that I use an Android phone I used to use as my main phone, but which is since broken. That I plan to use for as IP webcams, but again. More generally, think about how you can take these old devices and put them to use in an internet ecosystem. You probably saw my earlier video looking at Internet of Things in the lab. If I could use these, you know, to collect, maybe not collect um, CO2 information, maybe I'd use a microcontroller, but to record video or, or collect sound and report back to a computer and be part of an Internet of Things system in the lab that could help my work a great deal and, and improve the workflow. And indeed, in clinical microbiology labs where lots of things are automated, there is you know more formal Internet of Things applications. And that's just the lab. Even in the home, you can imagine, I could write an application, a networking-based application for these to turn on and off lights or to report information about sound or temperature or humidity changes in, in, in different locations of, of the house or indeed in part apartment where I am now. Thank you all for watching. Please comment down below about why you love your Paul Moss devices. And as always, like and subscribe. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend.